What's up, beautiful people? Today in this video, I'm going to take a look at the slow and complicated path towards the American Revolution. Most people think the story goes something like this. England imposes some taxes. The colonies were like, heck no to that. They drop some tea in a harbor. There's some protesting. And then after shots are fired at Lexington and Concord, you get a Declaration of Independence drafted, and the 13 colonies band together to fight for their freedom. We win our freedom because we have the super awesome George Washington on our side, and because we are Americans, not Americans. And now we have a reason to celebrate every 4th of July with fireworks. Hold up. Things in history are never that simple. Let me explain how it really went down. Now where we left off in our last video is the victory against France made England the big dog in North America, but that victory will come at a cost. And events such as Pontiac's Rebellion meant there were going to be added cost of defending the long frontier border between the colonies and the Native American tribes west of the Appalachian Mountains. It took a lot of resources for the British to actually squash Pontiac's Rebellion, so in their mind, it made sense that the colonists would not settle west of the Appalachian Mountains with the announcement of the Proclamation Act of 1763. Not only that, to the British, it was time the colonies would help pay for their own defense by paying some new taxes, and they would start to follow some of the mercantile rules they had largely ignored during the period of solitary neglect. So they're going to pay some new taxes, and they're going to start to follow some of the rules that they were ignoring. Because remember, prior to 1763, the colonies enjoyed what many people referred to as this period of solitary neglect. They had a great degree of freedom. Think of it like when your parents go out of town or you have a substitute teacher. Some of you hoodlums out there might be tempted to ignore all the rules that are in place. Well, Mama Britain was pretty pretty much a absent colonial ruler for much of the time prior to 1763. Well, after 1763, solitary neglect comes to a crashing halt. And you're going to see all sorts of changes to British colonial policy, which I will address in this video. But before I do that, it is important to remember the basic function of colonies. It was pretty simple. In the words of Biggie Smalls, Give me the Britain operated its colonial empire under mercantilism. What this meant was they want to attempt to maintain favorable balance of trade, export more than they import. Colonies would supply raw materials, things like tobacco, rice, sugar, and would be a market for exports of Britain, as well as pursuing the goal of increasing their gold and silver in the treasury. And way before the French and Indian War, laws were in place, such as the Navigation Acts, but they were largely ignored until after the war was over. The Proclamation Act of 1763 will be the first major major source of tension between the colonies and Britain, but adding to this breakdown in their relationship was the fact that the Prime Minister, another white dude named George, George Grenville, began to implement policies that would require the colonies to help pay for Britain's war debts and to help pay the cost of defending them from future attacks along the western frontier. That's where you get all these taxes. Britain began to impose taxes on imports and exports from the 13 colonies. You could see a list of them right there, as well as enforcing policies such as the Navigation Acts that were previously ignored. Now, I highly recommend you check out the video in the description that goes into all the details as to what went down between 1763 and 1776, how the colonies reacted, why the British did what they did. But let me highlight just a few of the big ideas you should know about. As you can imagine, colonists who enjoyed lax enforcement prior to the Sugar Act of 17. 1963 were not too happy with these colonial changes, and there will be all sorts of forms of colonial protest during this period. Pamphlets and speeches were written, political propaganda, economic boycotts, attacks on tax collectors, and on occasion, even riots and violence. It is important you understand that some of the colonial concerns are relatively simple to understand. For instance, what if England keeps increasing taxes? Taking money out of the pocket is definitely going to cause some tension, and obviously they're not going to like it, but there are other concerns as well. What about the autonomy of the colonial legislative assemblies? In the colonies' minds, they should decide the rules and the taxes of their local government, and if the British Parliament is the one doing it, that means they are losing their ability to self-govern and their ability to kind of make their decisions on a local level. People like James Otis condemned the British Parliament for issuing taxes on the colonists when colonists were not allowed to vote for who represented them in Parliament. You know the colonial demand, no tax 
taxation without representation. The British response to this was this idea of virtual representation. All British subjects are represented by Parliament, but the colonists were not having any of that mess. Now, a really big idea you should keep in mind, imperial efforts to raise revenue and consolidate control over the colonies was done without direct colonial representation or consent. And as a result, resistance within the colonies emerged as arguments about the rights of British subjects, the rights of the individual, local traditions of self-rule, and the ideas of the Enlightenment spread throughout the colonies. So a big reason for colonial anger, and as a result, the American Revolution was resentment over renewed enforcement of colonial regulations. The colonies did not like that England was consolidating control. The imposition of new taxes to raise revenue. Not only was there a reluctance to pay these taxes, but there's a feeling that these taxes were taking away or eroding their political autonomy. No taxation without representation. Adding to all these things is the growing influence of ideas coming over from Europe as a result of the Enlightenment. A very important Enlightenment figure is John Locke, who argued individuals have natural rights and the power of government is derived from consent of the governed. So ideas from people like Locke are trickling over into the colonies. Examples of Enlightenment ideas influencing the colonies can be seen in Thomas Paine's Common Sense, which argued for independence in January of 1776. And even though Common Sense is published after the battles of Lexington and Concord, independence was a radical idea, even in January of 1776. T. Payne called for the creation of a republic based on natural rights of the people. This was another radical idea at this time and also heavily influenced by the Enlightenment. Another document that is very much influenced by the Enlightenment is the Declaration of Independence. It outlined unalienable rights, these were natural rights, and that the power of government rests with the people, this idea of popular sovereignty. So even though you have these Enlightenment ideas really influencing this move towards independence, the movement towards independence would be a slow one. Like I said, even after the deaths of colonists at Lexington and Concord, there is no clear consensus for independence. And even after the Declaration of Independence was signed and the war is being fought, historians estimate that nearly a third of colonists remained loyal to England and many others were neutral throughout the conflict. Regardless, with the Declaration of Independence, the colonies were officially fighting for their independence. And it wasn't just taxes that caused the American Revolution. Taxes, a desire to move west, a history of self-government that was suddenly interrupted in 1763, as well as ideas from the Enlightenment that made people question the role of individuals, the rights that individuals have, and the purpose of government. All played a role in giving us an excuse to eat way too much food on July 4th and to shoot off fire into the air which will scare every animal in our neighborhood. If this video helped you out, go ahead and click like. Leave a comment if you have any questions. We have all types of free resources on the website, apushexplained.com, playlist on YouTube, so tell all your friends about the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day. Peace.